For many of us around the world, lockdowns are easing off and we are starting to venture out again. For some people, it means time to start shaving, time to interact with other humans again, and to have a clean pair of pants every single day. However, for me and for you, it means it's time to start venturing out and doing some street photography once again. And in this video, I want to answer a question that I've been asked many times, and that is, where do you even start in street photography? Like, I want to do it now, but where do I start? Like, what do I do to just get going? Now, before we begin, let's quickly identify what street photography is overall. I know everyone's got their own opinions, but just as a general overall, what does street photography actually mean? to avoid any confusion going forwards. To me, simply means taking photos in an urban environment of everything included within that environment at a specific moment in time, therefore almost documenting what that urban environment looks like. Now, in terms of styles, there are many different styles of street photography ranging from really sort of gritty black and white documentary type stuff, all the way to really clean, you know, polished, fine art type photography and in terms of finding which style is right for you to be honest that just takes time and effort and you just need to keep doing it and keep repeating keep fine-tuning until you figure out what works for you and just run with that and the final most important point there are some very opinionated people on the internet who will tell you what street photography is and what it isn't in their opinion and if you don't agree with them they will bring you down they will tell you you're wrong just so that they can bring themselves up and make themselves feel more important and like they know what they're talking about. Avoid those people, block them, ignore them, unfollow them, because you just don't need that, especially when you're starting out. So yeah, just forget all of that and do what you want to do. Street photography is so unpredictable. Like you can literally go out, right, for 30 minutes and come home with five good images. Also, you can go out for five hours and come back with nothing. So there's really no sort of like direct correlation um, with regards to time you put in versus the results you get out. Obviously, the better you get, the more good results you will get. But as an overall, yeah, there's no correlation. To put it further into perspective, ask any good photographer that you know online, whether it's street photography, landscape photography, anything where the elements are out of your control, and they will tell you 12 good images a year, by good I mean images that you can put in the gallery or you can print, 12 of those a year is a very, very good result. And finally, you reframe your mind and your attitude towards street photography or any photography in general. So rather than going out and putting the pressure on yourself saying, okay, I need to come back with these many photos, just go out for a nice walk. Okay, and if you come home with some pictures, it's a bonus. If you don't come home with any pictures, well, guess what? You've gone for a nice walk, you've done some exercise, and you can have a pizza or something now to celebrate. Now let's talk about some boring stuff. I'm not a lawyer, this is not legal advice. Um, this is just my opinion from my research I've done. I did do a whole video about this separately, so I've linked it below. Basically, in the UK, if you're on public land, you can take pictures of whatever you want. If you're on private land, in theory, you need a permit. Um, but to be honest with you, many places in London, they are private, even though they're clearly like, you'd think they're public, like Canary Wharf and a lot of tourists go there. So you can take photos there. In many cases, you'll be fine. Just be ready to get hassled by security if you turn up with a massive camera and a gimbal and all that sort of stuff. Also, what you want to do with those photos has a huge impact on what type of like permit you might need. So for example, if you're just putting them on Instagram or in a gallery or for artistic purposes, you don't need anything really. However, if you want to sell your street photography, even if it's on public land and there's people that you can recognize or private property that you can recognize such as buildings, you might need various model releases to be able to use it commercially and that's a whole separate thing which I'm not going to get into this video, but it's just something to keep in mind. Now, as for the ethical side of stuff, to be honest with you, that really depends on your own sort of morals and opinions. Now, what I personally do is I don't take any photos of people that are in vulnerable positions, such as homeless or disabled, things like that. Also, if I have kids in my photos, I make sure that they're hidden, as in they're either silhouetted or you can't see their face clearly. Um, and generally speaking, I don't want anyone in my photo to look bad. So if I show my photo to someone, they look at it and go, oh my God, that's disgusting. 
I kind of failed. Now, I know all of this can sound really off-putting, but honestly, just don't overthink about it. As long as you don't go onto someone's private property, start taking photos, and then if they get funny about it, you get funny about it, you should be fine. Anywhere in London, within reason, is not a problem. And the only time people really bother you is if you're like pointing your camera at you know CCTV cameras in the big building or the doors or anything like that. So as long as you use common sense, you wouldn't have any problems. So what about if you get stopped? You're walking around taking pictures, everything's great, and then someone you took the picture of or security come up to you and be like, what are you doing? What do you do then? And to be honest with you, this is one of the biggest things that sort of prohibits people from really diving into the genre because they are not scared but they're like apprehensive about getting stopped and to be honest with you I completely understand it because you know it can be quite intimidating because you know usually when people stop you they are questioning you as if you're doing something wrong um, so yeah I can definitely see how this um, yeah how this can seem very intimidating to start with. So to put things into a bit of a perspective, I've been doing the street photography for quite a while now, a few years, okay? And I've been going into London at least once a week and taking photos for hours at a time. And in all of that time, like tens or hundreds of thousands of photos, I've only been stopped three times, okay? And all those three times were by security guards and not by just normal members of the public. Every time normal members of the public did sort of uh, look at me or clock what I was doing, usually it was just like a nice polite smile, oh sorry I wasn't a shot, or I hope it was a good shot. So what do you do if you do get stopped by a normal member of the public if you've taken their photo? Well, generally speaking, just be really open, be really honest with them about what you're doing. You're a street photographer, this is your hobby, you're taking pictures of the city, you show them the picture you've taken of them, um, show them your work, say your Instagram quickly, just to show them that you're not like some weirdo. Um, and in 99.9% .9 of cases, they will be happy because they'll be like, oh, okay, because you're doing it for fun. And then I'd go a step further and say to them, what's your email address or what's your Insta username? I'll send you this photo once I've done with it. And then most people, I can't think of anyone in their right mind who'll be like, no, I don't want that. And if you get stopped by security, just be completely open and honest with them. Say, look, oh, I'm taking pictures as a hobby. I'm a street photographer. I take pictures around London. And that's it. And honestly, 99.9% .9 of cases, they will not bother you anymore. Um, they might ask you, look, don't take pictures of the doors over there. or Don't take pictures of the cameras over there, which is fair enough. You know, we live in weird times. Um, but yeah, seriously, you have nothing to worry about, okay? As long as your motives are good, Okay? As long as you're not trying to do something weird, you haven't got anything to worry about. So, this helicopter's getting quite loud, so I'm probably going to bugger off. But, basically for this bit, don't let the fear of someone stopping you, stop you from going out and taking pictures. Because in 99.9% .9 of cases, your interactions will be positive, and chances are, you will probably never even get stopped. Please remember there's no such thing as bad light, it's just different light which will look different and create a different result. Obviously soft golden light that you will get at sunrise or sunset will give the most pleasing result overall. However, don't dismiss midday harsh light because if you expose for the harsh light you can get some really nice abstract photos with loads of deep black shadows and really sort of nice um, bright highlights. In the same way, don't dismiss boring cloudy days because you can use boring cloudy days to create really sort of moody black and white photos as well as anything with skin tone, so portraits. Anything skin tone related will look much better on a cloudy day because the cloud is effectively a giant softbox. So the takeaway here is go out in as many different conditions as possible, find what you like the most and then just focus on that. But also don't forget to practice in other lighting conditions so that you can take photos regardless of the lighting conditions. I've said that word a few times. Subjects are a very personal thing and can range from anything like an old newspaper on a table all the way to a cityscape. Everyone has their own preferences for subjects and over time you will as well. Now even though it's not for me to tell you what's a good or a bad subject, what I can do is share my approach and then you can make your own conclusions as to why I've picked this approach. So I will photograph everything that you would find in a city. Taxis, buses, people, buildings, streets, newspapers, literally everything. And the reason for that is quite simple. I want to document the city as a whole and not just focus on one or two specific things about that city. 
So if this is your first time and you're just starting out, I would actually recommend this approach, okay? Photograph everything, okay? If you see something and you think, I wanna take a picture of it, take a picture of it. Over time, what you'll find is there'll be certain things that you gravitate to the most. So let's say street portraits, you might really enjoy doing, and then maybe you focus just on that. And honestly, there is something to be said for getting very good at one specific type of street photography, rather than being like me, sort of, you know, a bit of everything. As for compositions, that's an entire topic in itself. However, for this video, let me just quickly give you three things you can start using right away. The first one is the rule of thirds. I'm sure you've heard of it before. Basically, you take the frame, split it into like nine squares or rectangles, and basically wherever they crisscross, which is in the third of the frame, that's when you want to have your subject or a point of interest. The second thing is leading lines, and leading lines basically means that whatever your subject is, there is something in the frame that would lead the viewer's attention to your subject. So for example, in this frame that we've got here, that building there is sort of slightly pointing towards me, leading sort of the viewer towards me. Finally is framing, and framing is where you take your subject and then you put them within something else like a frame, therefore, you know, driving your viewer's attention to that subject. Again, if you take this as an example, I've got the building there, I've got a building there that frames me because behind my head is just sky. The following two techniques are very basic, but they're fantastic for starting out, and even at any level, they work. So the first one's called fishing, and as the name suggests, you basically find a composition in a particular location where the light is good, everything sort of works, and then you just wait for the right subject to come into the frame roughly where you want to be them, fire off a burst of images, and then hopefully there's one there that you like. This is a very tried and tested method, one thing I'd say though is don't hang around the same area too long. It looks a bit weird and it's a bit of a waste of time. My limit is about five to 10 minutes. I mean, if it's really good, I might stay longer. But if nothing has come through, I'll use this, my phone, take a picture of it. Now I've got the date, the time, the GPS coordinates and what it looks like so that I can come back in the future and see if I can get this photo again. The second technique involves having the camera at just below chest level with the screen tilted up so you can see what's happening. You're then walking around the scene, looking down at the screen and framing and taking photos. The reason this is such a good beginner's method is because it's very easy to just blend in like that because you just end up looking like a tourist, like you're taking a video. No one really pays attention. People generally start paying more attention when the camera is at eye level, so if you're looking through the viewfinder. Um, and obviously if you're just starting out, that can be a bit intimidating. So if you use this method, maybe for the first few months until you get really comfortable, uh, you'll be off to a very good start. And finally, let's talk about gear, which is arguably everyone's favorite topic. However, for street photography, it's actually the least important thing. Unlike things like, unlike things like wildlife photography, where you need a massive lens that's worth more than your house, for street photography, you don't really need that. I mean, as a matter of fact, you can get away with using your phone. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend it because ergonomically, phones are not that comfortable, but basically, you don't need a really fancy, expensive camera. And as a matter of fact, if you rock up with a, I don't know, a 1DX, like with a massive lens on, you're just gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Whereas you have like a really compact camera, something like one of those Ricoh um, point and shoot cameras, you'll just completely blend in. So regarding lenses, you've got two options. You've got zooms and you've got primes. Now, there are some people out there that are very vocal about what is a street photography lens. My two cents on this is this. So, first of all, both are equally as good as each other. They just serve different purposes. The zoom lens will be much better when you physically can't move yourself. So let's say if you're in the back of a taxi, driving around the city, a zoom would be much better because you physically can't move. Whereas if you're walking around the city, then the prime is way better because you stay inconspicuous because it's smaller and lighter, so it's easier for you to carry, but also it forces you to move around. And by moving around, you start looking at different compositions and finding different ways ways to compose the images which will ultimately make you a better photographer. Also with primes, because they're so inconspicuous, you can get away with a lot more, let's say, intimate photos than you otherwise would with a massive zoom lens. And finally, 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 primes are much better value for money because you will get generally better image quality for the money you spend and also overall they are cheaper than zoom lenses. And I know many people will be asking this question, 
What would I recommend? Well, I'd say go for an XT2 or an XT3 Fuji with the 23, 35 and 50mm F2 primes. And honestly, that's about it. I know I've covered a lot in this video. However, I think you've now got everything you need to head out, start taking some street photos. I'm sure you might have some questions, so write them down below and I will get back to you. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you're doing well. If you like, give it a like. If you're not subscribed, subscribe already for more videos like this. Hope you have a good day, good week, good month. Well, I'll see you before the month ends. Anyway, see you later.